guys work every other day of the week. <laughs> so the only day we could do it was on a Sunday afternoon. So if we can start, George, I'll have you tell us a little bit about the history of George and Louis, and just, and then we'll have Danilo tell us a little bit about the history of mom and dad. And then what we're gonna do is take questions from the audience and you know, the folks who are here, and we've got the slideshow going, we're going to look at all sorts of um, pictures from our archives. You want to go ahead, you can just talk in the room, you don't need to talk into a microphone or anything. Okay, we're not going to talk. You can stand, yeah, the microphone is actually up here, so. Yeah, well, there's people on the line. Yeah, that's fine. George, once you get here, I need to be touched up. Yeah. No, you're good. You're good, right, Amelia? Good. We're going to get this straight. Yeah, we've been. We're going to do a round table. Okay, so George, you go ahead and tell us a little bit about George and Louis, the history of George and Louis. Okay. Well, the George and Louis started 40 years ago. Uh, uh, it was like uh, when we bought an old. Uh, um, the old burger chef, not a business, but but we, I guess we could go back to even further back to 1970 when we opened Louis Salad Bowl, which was very similar to George and Louis, just one name different. <laughs> George and Louis, and Louis. But where was the other? Yeah, we started at, at uh, Louis Salad Bowl in 1970. And it was, it was after I was returned, graduating from University of Georgia, and my father was running the plaza. He he ran the first, the front of the house, and my uncle Tom ran the back of the house. And he said, "I bought the service station in an auction, and and I, I think it'll make a great takeout restaurant. And I want you to run it." And I told him, "Oh, uh, Dad, I'll do it only if if you." Two conditions. I said, if you let me run it myself, and you let me name the restaurant because I got a good name picked out for it. And he thought about it, and he said, "I'll do it. I'll be the silent partner." I should have known better. <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible for a father to be a silent partner, especially a Greek father. So uh, I named it Louis Salad Bowl, and. Uh, and we got along great. We did very well, as long as I did what he said. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and it was it was basically like a, a carry out, mainly carry outs. My dad's idea was like ahead of his time. It was basically, and he was running the plaza. He'd come check up on me all the time. And uh, we. Uh, and uh, we've been at the location where we are now since 81. 81. And uh, so, what, does anybody have any questions? So where was the location of the salad, Louis Salad Bowl? It was right on, um, on the corner of Bartow and Jackson Street. But there's a car wash there now. It was right oh. next to where Harper Seafood is. Okay. Right there. okay. And it was a little, yeah, my dad bought it as a Texaco station and we made it into a restaurant. And then you moved yeah. over to Remington. Yeah, it was very small. Ah! They kept it full all the time. Right? Very small room. Restaurant. To, to begin with, we didn't put any tables in there at all. When we first started, everything was to go, but we just had the counters that you would stand up at. And uh, people wanted to eat there. But, but by popular re request, a lot of people wanted to sit down and eat. So, so we went ahead and made those stand-up counters shorter and put chairs around them and put some tables around the window. And and uh, I never forget one little kid came up to me and said, "I sure am glad y'all made enough money to put some chairs." In here. <laughs> <laughs> and then you transitioned into George and Louis on Remington. Yeah, but it wasn't the same like Louis Salad Bowl moving. It was a different yeah. restaurant. No, it was later uh, we. Uh, we opened uh, another restaurant when, when, when um, uh, the, uh, see, I got out of the restaurant. I was just working. We leased out the old Louis, Louis Salad Bowl to somebody else. 
and, and I was working with the state and I was moonlighting with my dad at the plaza. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, that, that restaurant came available, it, it was for sale, the old uh, burger chef. And and then I, after I had three daughters, I, I said I better get back in the restaurant business. I was working for in the state well, and I really enjoyed true. what I was doing. But George, when year was this? When you opened up George and Louis in the yeah, location, what year was this? Yeah, that, that, that's when we we started where we are now. What, 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 what year, year? What year was this? Like, you know what? It was 81. 81. And uh, I, but I remember I was uh, working at the plaza when you guys got started. That's right. And you know, leasing. That's right. From, uh, well, that's Gordon a good Andrew. transition into mom and dad. So maybe Danielle, you can tell us a little bit about mom and dad, and then we'll go into questions. So I got a bunch. Yeah. Certainly. So what we did was we moved to Thomasville in 1977. My dad uh, came up here. We, every Sunday, we take a ride as a family, me, my brother, my mother, and I, and my father. And uh, for some reason, we came to Thomasville. My dad saw the the building was tasty, we were believe it the time. And he saw a for sale sign, so he pulled in, and the lady happened to be in there. She was selling just the inventory because the building belonged to Mr. Mathis, ah. George or Louis, one of them owned the building. I don't know which one when I was little. So dad made a ridiculous offer, thinking because I did not like Thomas folks. I just got settled in in Tallahassee in school. My English was pretty bad. My brother didn't care for it. My mom didn't care for it. We didn't make it back to Thomas when the lady took the offer and dad said, well, I shook her hand. We got to go to Thomas. Oh. So we, <laughs> we came to Thomas. So my brother, my father, and my uncle did their own reparation as far as the electrical plumbing and gas lines and everything with no permitting. And a oh, policeman wow. stopped them at 11 o'clock at night. They were trying to tap into the gas line. <laughs> And the policeman says, what are you doing? He goes, and my uncle said, I'm I am I got to get some gas. We can cook. He goes, where's your license? He goes, I don't need a license. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh. <laughs> so basically, the inspector came out. They made us go through the whole processes. And then in 77 of February, we opened up at the uh, location on the corner of Dawson and Smith Avenue, across from Bob's IGA. Now. OK. We're single Yeah. Before they remodeled. I think the picture came up. There's your yeah, dad. That's, uh, that's your okay, dad. No, that's and, not that. Uh, that look like basically, the picture came up. <laughs> and it was like a little blue building, a little blue church. And then about uh, two years later, an older gentleman named Mr. Wick came and had dinner with us and uh, forgot his wallet. And my brother said, Dad, I don't know about this. I think, I think we just lost some money, but the guy has no wallet. Dad said, hey, if he comes back, he comes back. The next day he came down. <laughs> wrote my dad a check and he said get in the car i want to show you something my dad said i don't know about this so my, he said tita what do you think this is my mother he said well go so they went out to the house he said i'm selling this house because my wife passed away i think it'd make a good spot for a restaurant so dad showed mom and he and i restored it ourselves and that was 1980 on smith avenue, avenue. On smith avenue the so you were in three locations two two oh just two okay my mom and dad came to america in 73 and they started out as bus boys and dishwashers in tallahassee in tallahassee working for my uncle back then you had to be sponsored by a current american citizen or american family they had to give you housing uh a, a job food naturally and insurance uh, health insurance for you to come to America back in the old days. Uh, so that's what mom and dad did. In 69, our visa was denied. In 1973, our visa was approved when we came to America. And to Tallahassee. Well, to Tallahassee. Interesting. April 15th, Texas. Dad had a oh. file the same day. <laughs> so we've been in that current location now for 41 years. Wow. Why years. didn't you want to come to Thomasville? You, personally, you were saying as a kid. I was 10 years oh, old. Okay. He didn't have any choice. He was just going on. I was yeah, yeah. young. As you said, working for a Greek father, <laughs> yeah. working for an Italian father, That's it's it. probably as challenging as well. But uh -huh. we, it's, Thomas has been a great blessing to us. I mean, <laughs> Thomas will, citizens have absorbed us, and we've been very, very fortunate. I could have been. I could have asked for a better opportunity. Now my mom and dad are both deceased. Mm -hmm. So my mom, wife and I and my kids are basically the yeah, every time I call, it's they always answer, and I kind of have to like have to go through them to get to you. So they're they're doing their job well. They're sure. Sure. They sure had paid good for us. Yes, sir. And uh, believe it or not, George is actually my my son's. I mean, my uh, brother's son's. Mass Mo and Cindy. Ah. Which, 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 they, they, they moved to our church. Us. I was 
the Godfather. That's right. Uh, uh, Vito and uh, Giuseppe. Yeah, you were Giuseppe's Godfather. Yeah. Oh, both of them. Just one? Both of them. Nice. So yeah. how, and but I know- Fellow like a Godfather. Are... <laughs> if you get questions online, let us know. Do you uh, need to flip no, 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 you're good. You're, the camera's pointing at us, so you're good for the people online. I was just curious <laughs> also how the businesses have changed over the years. I mean, that's a long time to be in business, so. So the, the, the transition, I think, has been from, um, I think the, the menu and as far as like di the dietary restrictions, you know, like back in the, in the 70s, you didn't have gluten intolerance, you didn't have vegans, you didn't have vegetarians. People were potting up, you came in, you got it. But I think as a time to change, people are demanding more fish, more uh, veal dishes, pasta dishes, uh, health conscious, okay. because we're all like becoming more and more sensitive about our waistlines. <laughs> it's a good thing. Yeah. Now, uh, now, in George's case, you know, there were Greek restaurants going back in Thomasville for a hundred years, but <laughs> I, I'm trying to think about it. The only Italian restaurant I can think of in Thomasville was Roman Gate, which I think was Maxi Powell, maybe. That's correct. It used to be around. across the street from Mom and Beth. So when, when your folks still open, huh. was there like a learning process for some of the customers? You know? Actually, what happened was when uh, these are stories that I heard because like I said I was little. And when we opened Mom and Dad's, uh, about the fourth day, a little a gentleman that worked for the Thomasville Times Enterprise, I do not recall his name, but I have his original article that he wrote. He said, I want to do a story about you. And my father says, please don't, because we're not ready for it, because we were afraid of being folks of people. Well, he ran, this, he ran this story. And at 8 o'clock at night, Dad was going to the table says, we're out of food. So, you know, that's, that's where I think the evolution came. And, right. And because, you know, we, we strive our own homemade pastas, sauces. Right. We do our own uh, breads and so forth. So we put our own spin on everything. So uh, we've always done it since my mom and dad actually taught me. So that's a tradition we followed. Well, you know, the Roman Gate, I don't remember it as being an Italian restaurant. It was, a, I, I've eaten there several times. It was on Smith Avenue. That is correct. But it was a buffet. I, I've eaten there. It was nothing. If but I'm a not buffet. mistaken, the Roman Gate is located where. The medicine, uh, medicine, man. medicine. Yeah, it's right there on Smith Avenue. Uh -huh. You know, and maybe that's a mistake on my part. I've always assumed it is because some people would tell me there was like a big fresco in the back, and I don't know. It was, uh, it was where uh, the medicine count. man's corner is, right there. Yeah, it was right there. That's where I took uh, uh, my wife on our first date. Uh -huh. Oh, well, okay. Uh, I remember it well. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I just think of the, you know, I mean, obviously I didn't eat there, and that was before I came to Thomasville. I always think of this picture that we have of it. With yeah, this, that was in the 70s. With, this, with like 76. this giant, giant cow sitting on top yeah, of the car. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like Roman Gate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the giant. I do have a question. Well, oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say. You, did either of you guys think, or your parents have to alter the menu? Mom and dad. Yeah. Alter the menu or the foods you were offering for the South Georgia or the American palate versus what they maybe would have wanted to put on there, something maybe a little or, more or traditional. Cook or home. cook at home. Yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. Was there a difference between? Did you have to yeah. change? Yeah. Did you have to change the recipes or the food it's you were fine. putting on the menu compared to maybe what they would have been making at home, more traditional meals? Well, see, my dad had a different philosophy. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he told me, he said, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Right. <laughs> you know? so, uh, right. So we didn't have a lot of Greek items to start with. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we didn't do as well as the Italian items. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so your menu was a little different secret. in the beginning? Yeah, it was secret, but, but we did have Greek salad yeah, yeah. and a few Greek items. But my uh, mom and dad came here during the war, and uh, they were, uh, they had a, my dad had a restaurant in Fayetteville, North Carolina, mm -hmm. Fayetteville, and uh, my mom and dad were newly yeah. wed, and my dad was drafted in the service 10 months before Pearl Harbor, oh. and uh, my mother followed him to all the bases that he went to, and he came to Thomasville, and uh, there was a man named Chris Blaine that owned the Plaza restaurant. And uh, my dad and my mom went in his restaurant 
and he became, became good friends with theirs. And, and later he was to, to become my godfather. Okay. So I got to know him pretty well. And, uh, but uh, my dad uh, w would work in the plaza, but when he was on leave, the, uh, he helped Chris. And he was his, uh, my dad was a good cook. And he, he was his pastry chef. He helped him with his desserts when, when he was off at the base. And my mother, uh, that's the old plaza restaurant. And uh, so, uh, Chris Blaine he was a very successful businessman here. He, he owned the Plaza Restaurant and right next to it, he had a sandwich shop called, called the Blue Room Sandwich Shop. And he sold my dad the sandwich shop and my mother ran it while my dad was in the service. And it was a little, a little sandwich shop and, uh, and he also owned the pool hall and sold it to Bailey and Jack Salumas, where it is now, my godfather. And across the street where the bookstore is, he owned a, Bowling alley, a bowling alley, and down the street from there, he had a little uh, club called the Panther Room, where all the soldiers would go and drink. I don't know if you remember any of that. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> but uh, and then uh, when my dad came back after the war, he wanted to sell my dad the plaza, but he he had made plans to go down. He went down to and, and bought a restaurant down in Daytona. And he sold that one and he bought the Palm Beach Pier. He changed the name of the bar. Well, it was called Hitler's Pier. He changed it to Palm Beach Pier. That's where I was born. And then after I was six months old, they sold the pier. He came to Thomasville because they thought Thomasville would be a better place to raise children. And bought the Plaza restaurant from my godfather. And then he, he, he opened the restaurant Call uh, Blaine's restaurant on on uh, on uh, Jackson Street, and and then when that went out of business, he he, he opened a restaurant about off to call the Green Turtle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, yeah. that's how they came. In. Wow, that's a lot of. Yeah, he's had more restaurants than that had shoes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of restaurants. Well, they don't well, have well, Chris's well, picture. I'll tell you something. Holy you wouldn't believe. He uh, opened uh, a lot of restaurants uh, right here in Thomas. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's yeah. a lot of restaurants for yeah. a relatively small town. A lot of, of course. Right before he died, uh, I went to see him. He said, George, get a pencil and paper. I want you to make a list of all the restaurants I've opened since I came to Thomasville. And uh, he, uh, he goes through the whole thing. Start with the first restaurant in Greensboro, North Carolina. And then, you know how many restaurants there was that he opened? I don't know. 25 restaurants. I was going to say 30, wow. yeah. There's a bunch of 25 Do you mean Arthur Cathanas? Arthur Cathanas, Thomas for Restaurant. Yeah, I don't remember him, but I've heard about him. Yeah. Yeah. I swear, uh, yeah. And uh, later, my dad was to open that same restaurant, the Thomas Row Restaurant. He opened it in, 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 with uh, Angelo Katsoulis and George Fragantis. Mm -hmm. They both lived in our house for a year. Yeah. We brought him from Greece. George forgot this is more than uh, And to George, wow. George's daughter, yeah. Cindy, is married to the, uh, the, the sister-in-law. Now, who was it that owned the Royal Cafe? Uh, the, the Royal okay. Cafe. The Royal Cafe, my dad sold it to George Joannes. Johann, that's the... To George Joannes, 1951. Yeah. My dad uh, sold it to him. <laughs> He, he was a good friend of his uncle's down in Tallahassee, Manuel Gillings. Okay. Well, and luckily, both of you guys, your current restaurants have weathered COVID-19 and the pandemic, right? COVID was a challenge. Uh, yeah. what, you, what happened to us, and probably him as well, is, um, as you well know, COVID basically shut everyone down and made, whenever the Trump made the statement that no one more than 10 people can conjugate in a public place, it forces us to shut down on carryouts and deliveries. And uh, one thing that we were able to do, keep all our employees for the PPP money. Yeah. Uh, that was very, it was a blessing. Um, it's still a little challenging. I think people are still in back of their minds or not. I don't know if they're 100% as comfortable coming right. in. Public well, I, I mean, you know, this has been for events here. This has kind of been where Same it's, thing. 
I think it's going to take a couple of years to. Yeah, um, you know it's funny because one song. guy used to work for us, uh, Chip Sanders. His dad's a local physician here in town, Chuck Sanders. I'll never forget having this conversation with him. This was in 19, 2019. He said the needles is going to be bad. We're going to shut down. The gaming events are going to shut down. The restaurants are going to shut down. I looked at him. I said, "Have you lost your darn mind?" I said, "What is wrong with you?" And I saw him. Three weeks ago, shook his hand. I said, Chip, you were spot on. Yeah. And I thought he was really just totally lost his mind. Huh. He was spot on. Well, look, you know, I, I, it's, I thought the same thing when I was here. I was like, you know, but there's, there's swine flu and H1. I mean, there's just, you know, it's like, okay, this is just going to be another thing like that. Where Well, it hurt, uh, what hurt yeah. us was we draw from about a 60 mile radius. Because it wasn't, yeah. And people were not traveling yeah. to come to restaurants, much less to come get a carryout take it back home, that's where our revenue really got hurt. Yeah, because George, you have a drive-through window. That was you've really always had, yeah. You've always had did that. Did you suffer at all, the drive-through pickup? And did you make yeah, up the difference yeah, in drive-through? Yeah, the uh, takeout bed to pick up. Yeah. I was going to say, what's funny is during that time, I mean, yeah. we were ordering, and I think I went to George, ordered out from George and Louis more during uh, the time during the shutdown. Yeah. 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 Thank God for the... Uh, Take yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. So do most of your customers, I mean, is it local Thomas Billions or you yeah. say 60 miles? We, so we, draw, we draw probably, I'd say that 75% uh, of the clientele is out to. Yeah, like Tallahassee. Because what, what, you, what you'll see here is, and like these two gentlemen probably speak to, they're not just going to support one, one entity. They're going to support all the entities. So by the time they make their circle and going out, <laughs> it may be, you know, I'm not exaggerating. I try, but I can't do it every day. Yeah, no, right. that's what I'm saying. So if you didn't, if you would, if we didn't depend on the out-of-town business, it'd be difficult to just survive on just the entities in Thomas. Just the population. We've got such a small population. Yeah. Of, yeah is, is, am, I, am I correct in that aspect? But every time we go around, there is... Uh, Parking lot is full. Well, yeah. we're fortunate. We're real fortunate. Well, Thank you, you very much. I appreciate your service. I appreciate your support. All these. He's been eating with us a long time. You know, I love favorite dishes. The bloody salad. That's what it is. It's a salad. That's what, a salad. What's a special salad? He likes a salad. Okay. Hey, you get the onion pasta, right? Is that right? That's right. Last time we didn't get the onion pasta. Yeah, no, 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 I used to get some lamb around. That's here, right. Too. That's right. You still have lamb? We do every now and then. Yes, sir. Yeah, you can tell he's great. <laughs> yeah. Greeks like lamb, right? That's right. My dad told me if you don't like lamb, you're not Greek. So. <laughs> and, for the re and for the record, I don't know how many George, big George and Louis I've had in my life, but you know, every time you go in there, it's like, my goodness, it's just they're, they're delicious. You do a good job. Well, I think the I think the uh, customer service you guys give too. I mean, when you go to George Louis, you, you, you probably are going to talk to George. You know, now I know you. I don't know if I necessarily be the one you know serving at the tables and stuff, but I mean, there's a good level of customer service in this town because I think a lot of the customers are local and you know them by name and stuff like that. We've been fortunate. Were your fan so your parents were hey, like cooks? So my mom came to America. Uh, as a as a cook working for my uncle in Tallahassee, my dad had never even boiled water. Okay. He was in the construction business. So when he came to America, he we didn't speak any English. I did not. My father, my mother, none. My brother spoke a little bit because he started studying it. I was in the fourth grade. My brother was in the tenth grade, and my mom was thirty eight. My mom, my dad was thirty nine. So dad was in the front uh, cleaning tables and doing the floors. Because he didn't have to communicate with anyone except doing. In the mornings, he started going in to do the prep work, and he learned that process. And he learned how to make bread, the sauce, the lasagnas, the the fettuccines, and that's how the process started. And he taught me. Well, you remember yeah. George Joannis? I do not. The, you know George Joannis. You're yeah, right. I do not. Yeah, George so. Joannis is the one that bought the Royal Cafe. He uh. uh yeah, he was a good friend of my father's. Yeah, and, and he had the last restaurant was down on West Jackson, I believe. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, for a while he had the Ship Ahoy yeah. at the Royal Cafe yeah. first in the Ship Ahoy. And then he had George's well, on Jackson Street. It was called yeah. George's restaurant. That's what I was going to tell you, though. He and I got to be pretty good friends, and I'd eat down there several times a week. Yeah. And he told me when he first came, I think he was in Tallahassee. 
And he couldn't speak any English. And you know how he learned going to Western movies on Saturday? I'll be the what he told me. Wow. That's how he learned to speak That's English. Amazing. Yeah, that sounds like George. Yeah. He was a real character, George. He was. <laughs> you know, I've, yeah. I've heard people have come in here and told me stories about the ship of oil. Yeah. That was, uh, <laughs> yeah. <that's, laughs> Where was yeah. it? In he had some great music on the jukebox. It was okay. It's on West <laughs> yeah. Jackson, that that's building that uh, it, you can still see, it still has the portal window where Miss Kitty's fireworks is. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. And it was a building that was made to look like a ship. Yeah. And it was a drive in sort of, yeah. you know, like roller hop kind of place. And but everyone would always tell me that it was like, yeah. You didn't want your parents to catch go there. Yeah, there was like a little strip there. There was a ship ahoy, was uh, George's, and then right next to it was VFW. And then a little further down was the uh, the uh, Pals driving. I was saying, Sam Wright just mentioned Pals. You've all heard of uh, Pals, right? My dad yeah. sold Pal driving mm -hmm. to. Uh, 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 what was his name? Johnson. Johnson, yeah. Uh, what was his first name? I can't think of it. <laughs> yeah. I remember the son. Otis Johnson. Jimmy, huh? Otis, so Jimmy was the son. Otis, that's right. Otis Johnson. Oh, Otis Johnson, and, the mayor, the, the but, mayor of Thomasville. But my dad won it in a poker game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he kind of liked to uh, pl uh, place wagers occasionally. You know? That was a hint of a wager. Yeah. yeah, I think your dad needed one more in his portfolio. Right? Yeah. They, used to, uh, <laughs> they used to shoot pool together at Jack Salumas' uh, uh, billiard academy. Now, all the businessmen. Of, I'll tell you what, that's a, that's a bad night losing your restaurant. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, I've got some good news and some bad news. What's the bad news? He goes, look for a job. Yeah. <laughs> What's the good news? He goes, the dining room. I don't want the restaurant anymore. <laughs> exactly. I feel fine. So the correct me if I'm wrong. What is the plaza's claim to fame now? What all this like continuously operating restaurant in Georgia, or how do they? Yeah, that's that's in, not thing. not you know one by one person obviously, but yeah. continuously operating. It's over hundred years old, right? The original yeah. plaza. Well, it was yeah, 19, uh, was it my dad yeah. in, in my uncle bought it in twenty-seven. Is that your uncle Tom? That's your the best Tom. Yeah, yeah Tom and. Uh, my dad and my Uncle Tom bought it in 47, but before that, my godfather had it for I'm not sure how long. So uh, that was, they bought it in 47. So it, it's the oldest restaurant that's continued to exist in the state of Georgia. And most of the time, my family had it. It's really only about three or owners, four owners, maybe? Well, there was, I think there was a period in the beginning where there was the original like, owner. The original, the original plaza is not the location now. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's it was, no, it was next door Tux. to the pool hall. Yeah, yeah. Pool. it's where Tokes had it. It's the Tokes right Theater. Yeah. That's the original plaza. And, and, and uh, it was, uh, and then when my dad bought it, he tore down the, the wall and, and added the blue room sandwich shop that my mother ran uh, that, that she had uh, during the war. And it made that a private dining room. It's called the Blue Room Dining Room and put a dining room in the back called the Rose Room. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that. Well, you but know, the buffet I, would be. I, I haven't seen any pictures of Chris Blaine up there. Yeah. Who is Chris Blaine? Who's the guy? He was one who sold my dad. I, think I mean, I don't know. Well, well he, he lived in Valdosta. He's, he, he's no longer living. Yeah. Well, we, if we don't have one, maybe there's one out there, but we don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He might have been just outside that. And, it, and it could be that we have know. one, and I don't know that it's, it's not identified. Yeah. yeah. Who yeah. had the rainbow? My uncle Tom opened the rainbow. He, he bought it for it was Dotson's uh, uh, grill. It was it really Dotson was really driving. Like, what, Dotson's driving. Yeah. 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 He bought it. And, uh, just in the '60s. In the '60s, Uncle Tom. Tom They gave us one of the right ones. He had barbecue and Greek salad and sandwich. So George, this piece of I worked in there some. George, this piece of paper that you're going to write down. Did you write it down? Do you have it? Do you still have papers at Mr. Blake's Oh, my dad's restaurant? Yeah. No, but I've got it right Okay, all right. We'll get it out of there. 
Just so you know, we guys, we got 17 people online watching as well. So if there's any questions, Amelia will pass them along. I had somebody that asked if we're going to show anything or talk about Inman Drugstore. And I didn't, I don't think, came across any pictures that we had. There, there, there is a picture of one. I can tell you about it, though. No, yeah. okay. you watch, they're listening at home. So if you want to talk about yeah. what you remember. Did you follow that, yeah. No. I was going to say that. No, we used to. Uh, Inman's Drugstore is right where the gift shop is now, where the, where the bay window on Broad Street, and uh, we would always, uh, we, we, I grew up in the wild, we'd play basketball, and we'd take a break for basketball, and we would walk downtown, and we'd go to Inman's Drugstore and have a cherry Coke and some malt crackers. They had a marble bar, uh, counter, uh, with the stools, marble tables. It was really a nice drugstore. And uh, so you could drive up with your automobile, and they would give you curb service. You remember that? No, I don't remember that. You tell yeah. me. That was, uh, that was yeah. like a high school hangout, right? Yeah. 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 But what yeah. about Izzo's? When did they open up? Because they were like yeah. a big Izzo's big. was uh, Terry's drugstore. Terry's yeah. drugstore was not quite quite as nice, but, but that's where all the high school kids would hang out. And that, was, that was back in the 60s. They had wooden, was that back in the wooden 60s? tables and wooden yeah. boots. It was Dick, it was it was Dick Izzo Dick. bought it from Mr. And, Terry because he was a pharmacist there. And then and Terry's Rocks had wood instead of the yeah. marble. And, and they had a, a jukebox that they played Bill Haley in the conference. Right. You know? <laughs> so Izzo's was another lunch counter drugstore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lunch counter. <laughs> they did their own in the, uh, in the, It was early rock and roll. Which is now the go <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Right. But I do not remember when they opened up. When did Izzo's open up? In the 60s? Yeah, that's it. Was, uh, well, uh, how, how long have you been here, sir? Huh? How long have you been here? Well, see, I was born here, but when I was about four years old, we moved away when my parents separated. And I grew up in Millen, Georgia. That's where my mother was born and raised. And it. then after I finished high school, I came back. So uh, I've been here all my life, just about. Yeah, what year did you come back? Huh? When did you come back? What year? I came back in the 50s. Hmm. But you remember Chris Plain then, don't you? Remember what? You do remember Chris Plain then. Oh, yeah. You do I remember, remember Chris. I sure did. I've been with my granddaddy. We rode over to Valdosta to his restaurant mm -hmm. a number of times. Yeah, that was a very, he had a very nice restaurant in Valdosta too. Green Sorry, Turtle. sir. What was your name they're asking online because they can't see your face? What's what your, your name? What's, what's my name is Gene Sampson. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry, they were asking who was talking. Um, and then uh, while I can interject, um, uh, her name is Anne. She is the granddaughter of the Inmans who owned Inman Drugstore. Mm -hmm. um, and she says that she has one of the marble tables from Inman Drug, so she does have a piece of it. Nice. And then Judith Crocker Corbin asked to everyone if anyone remembers uh, the cottage grill at the corner of Broad and my most. I do. It was a Clarence Walker owned it. It was right across from Jericho, too. We go there for ice cream when we got out of school. Yeah, Clarence Walker was the only one. But New Jersey. Oh, well, I was well, what they, they recognized your voice, Mr. Sampson, but they couldn't. They didn't see your face, and they wanted to double check that. Well, now you guys are doing a good job, George. Now there's 27 people online. Listening. Let me tell you one thing about Inman Structural. Okay. Yes, please. Okay, we were in 1965. We were eating in the in the Plaza Buffet in the Rose Room. And somebody came in and said, Vice President Hubert Humphrey is at Inman's drugstore. So my sister and I and her fiance were eating. So I said, let's go, let's go over and see him. So we walked over to Inman's drugstore and looked in the window. And everybody was standing away, uh, the, so, the uh, security guards and everybody. And he was standing right in the middle. Of the, of, the, of the drugstore by himself, you know, and uh, my uh, brother-in-law now, and my daughter's, uh, I mean, my sister's fiance said, come on, let's go in. I'm going to introduce you to him. Oh. So we go up to the vice president of the you know, and he says, um, Woodrow Vaughn, I'm in the Navy, and uh, I'm stationed at the uh, um, supply school in Athens, Georgia, and this is my fiance and her brother George. It was still there. We talked to him and talked to him, and everybody's watching us. They're like as if we knew the vice president. Well, you guys had the 
I guess you had the gall to just walk in there and nobody else was doing that. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> well, you could have done that. Like this. Yeah, and that's today. True. Not no, so not much. today. Yeah. <laughs> Then uh, somebody saw Fred Astaire in Thomas across the street. Fred Astaire? Yeah, Fred Astaire. He, he used to come play. He stayed with Whitney. He used to play golf. Oh, hanging out. Yeah. And yeah. Gotta get a bite to eat while you're here, I guess. Yeah. Wow. So what is this? Um, I've seen a couple people make comments online about the Hilltop restaurant. Now that's me right there. Who's that? That's, that's yeah. George. Oh, oh that's yeah. you. He was black hair. That's your name. Where, where, where was the um? Where was the Hilltop restaurant? Hilltop was on uh, Carroll Hill. Ah, okay. It was down, uh, it, there was the, uh, there was a motel there, it was called the uh, Townsville Motor Corp. And then uh, still... right next to it was the Hilltop, across the street was Dotson's, uh, Dotson's, uh, Dotson's Grill. Yeah, and uh, there was a lot going on around there. Sangsters drive in, was out there. The, Oh, there was a truck stop called Red's truck stop out there. Yeah, a lot of stuff going on in this corner. Mm -hmm. George, didn't, didn't most of your family members, including George from the, the plaza, all come from the same village in Greece? My dad uh, brought some, like, uh, uh, that's my dad and my uncle. That's uh, uh, Lendus, uh, Tim Lendus. He came from right around. Carpenisi, that, that, that part of this, my dad was from, but my mother was from another part of this, from Sparta. Oh, I thought that, that like George Fragakis and most Yeah, of George Fragakis came from the same village that my dad came from, Klatsi. I knew you that had some kind of connection. Yeah, Angelo Katsuta, the both of them, they lived with us for a year in my house. And, oh, really? And, 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 and worked in the plaza, and then they opened the Crystal Grill together. Correct. Uh, my dad and George and, and, and uh, Angela. Right. Yeah. And, and the Crystal Grill was under the upchurch building. Oh, I'm right. The barbecue ranch was owned by John Poulos, the one that opened that. Yeah. He came from that village, too. See, you see, see, the Greek tradition is, yeah, yeah. Well, which is standard in a lot of restaurant um, ownership. Yeah, they told me if, if you're Greek, you ought to be able to, work, to run a restaurant. Yeah, well, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. I think you mastered it yeah. yeah. one time. All of them that. were owned by Greeks, I think. There was a lot of Greek restaurants. But yeah. It, that, that were. I feel like there just sounds like there were a lot of restaurants for the population of Thomas County or Thomasville, period. I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking. And this is, uh, there's George right there. Oh, can you go back to that one? Oh, I can't. No, you can't go back. Yeah, it'll rotate yeah, around. It'll take, it'll take so yeah, long. Yeah, it'll rotate around. Yeah, it'll take so long. Yeah, it'll rotate It'll It'll sort of circle around. Look at those long haired guys. Now, that's place. George, uh, Joe Anderson's restaurant. Mm -hmm. George's restaurant. Mr. Hand, how long have you been in Thomasville? Me? Yes, <laughs> Just as long as I have. No, since We're the I same got, age. Since I got out of the Navy, well, actually, before I got out of the Navy. But my mother was from Thomasville, so I used to come down here in the 50s. Here's the hill cut. Over the summer, so gotcha. Interesting. There so, used to be a restaurant in the uh, on the first floor of the Scott Hotel. You know, you remember that? I do remember that. It's a nice restaurant. Yeah, just about the, the old hotels that, that they all had restaurants, in. and uh, and that, that was they tore down the Tosco to, to put the right. the, uh, the Scott Hotel there and. Uh, it was a very nice restaurant. And uh, the uh, Three Times Inn had a nice restaurant. It was very. They used to go to the nice. Plaza because they had the buffet on Sunday after church. Everybody to the Plaza was a buffet. Yeah. Okay. So, other than your own, what was your favorite restaurant or your favorite meal to get in town? My favorite restaurant. Yeah, you're not, I mean, it could be at your own well, or anywhere. I'm a little biased. Well, you've got to pick something besides your restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, anytime, like if you, you okay, got, happen is, to uh, get away from the restaurant for the day, where were you going to eat? Yeah. I've never known a Greek restaurant owner to eat anywhere. anywhere else. Own That's restaurant. what I was waiting to hear. Other places. That's what I was waiting yeah. to hear. Did they, they uh, just only we, eat a moment? When my kids were uh, real young, we put them on a, on a uh, to do a commercial. On the radio, yeah, and uh, they uh, 
uh, they asked him about the favorite place to eat, and uh, and they were young enough to tell the truth. You know? <laughs> well, what did they say? And they said, "Don't worry, George. We can just scratch that out. <laughs> we can take that off." <laughs> And this is my mom and dad at the, at the Rose Room. There's my aunt. And, and they went to George and Mark, they worked there for over 50 years. And uh, I can't remember that. Now, that's my Uncle Tom's Rainbow Drive in. That's over where uh, the bank is. Where, where Jackson, the bank is. Right? Yeah. yeah, the farmer's bank. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I can't seem to slow down the slideshow. I keep yeah, trying. Sure. One like thing they used to do, uh, the, the plaza would always buy these stairs and they'd advertise them. They put them in a fence right in front of the restaurant. Grand champion. We have you know? some pictures. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine doing that yeah. today? You know, well, putting a, a stair <laughs> up in, in a fence <laughs> right in front of the restaurant. Well, because they would have the uh, they'd have the auctions, right? And so yeah, that that they would. Uh, my dad would go to the auction and buy the stairs, you know. Right. And uh, but the, and then they well, after they bought the stair, they, they would let people know that we're going to make steaks out of that <laughs> stair to yeah. sell them in the restaurant. That's how it works. That's, yeah, people would come by and take a picture with it. And then, and There's a picture time, yeah. yeah. So we have the menu up here. Aren't there other, I mean, our places like Corn Ch like Chandler's and Henderson's have some, how long have they, all of those places? Chandler's, yeah. Chandler's, yeah. Chandler's was 1960s. Chandler's was 1960s. one of the great reserve Yeah. One place, one place I thought, of course, this you'd never think of it as a, as a place to eat was that there was some kind of a restaurant hamburger place at the highway drive-in. Oh yeah, they had good food. Yeah, they really did. I remember it. They, they, have, they really did. They had burgers and yeah. chicken. When it, when it comes to burgers, the highway and people talk about, uh, what's it, uh, Brazers? Brazers? The Brazier. The Brazier. Yeah. Yeah, there was a great restaurant that the old timers talked about. It was called John's Lunch. Mm -hmm. I don't remember that day. Uh, I do. So I was lunch, yeah. It was on Jackson Street, mm -hmm. right across from the, where the municipal auditorium is right there. Okay. Huh. So it's a little restaurant, John's Line. And then further down there, there's another Greek restaurant called the Greek American Cafe. Oh, yeah. That was the one. That was there forever. Uh, yeah. That one on West Jackson. Yes. My dad bought that one and from Shorty Letchus. My dad bought yeah. it for me. And two, a couple of weeks later, my dad was in the restaurant. In, in Is that there. the one where Shorty Lutches comes back and yeah, he came back to, and he said, "Louis, he, he, yeah, they, they were friends." He says, "How you doing, uh, Shorty?" And he, and he says, "Louis, I, I, I'm miserable." I says, "He says I, I can't stand not be having my restaurant." And he says, "Would you sell it back to me?" And my dad had an apron on. He took the apron off and he says, "Here you go." Oh my God. <laughs> he gave him the apron. I mean, none of these stories could happen. And today. they were friends all their life. Yeah. The, the transition, the number of restaurants. Um, someone just mentioned the waffle shop. Ooh. Yeah, that was him. The guy that was in the plaza. Like around where uh, Loon Spin is, right? That's, right. Where, that's where Tim worked. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was Tim and, and his brother uh, Gus would help him. Was it? I hate to ask, is it, was it waffles? I mean, like breakfast shop? <laughs> breakfast food? Breakfast. Was, breakfast? Okay. Yeah. Where the um, the pizza place is now. Moonspin. We have mm -hmm. yeah. one of those in Chapel Hill yeah. called Ye Old Waffle Shop. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the legit name. It sounds that, good. That lasted past when I was there, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh, good Tim worked in the plaza for a long time as a cook. And uh, his, uh, his sister, Kathy, is married to my cousin George. There he is right there. The guy with that in the middle. He on the waffle shop. Oh, okay. I take That's it. Right there. I take it labor was not an issue back then with all these restaurants like it is now. Like you guys had tons of people to work in all these restaurants. It must have been one of the largest employers was like just small restaurants. I time. think back then, if you needed more staff, you just had more kids. Yeah, <laughs> have more kids or get your relatives and your in-laws and your godparents. Pam <laughs> Wright just added in the chat, um, the Hendersons had restaurants beside each other. Waffle Shop had good breakfast and lunch and Altman's ate there every day. Oh, okay. Sounds, you know what, sounds right. <laughs> yeah, it sounds, I'd say that sounds accurate. How about Zesto's? That was... Yeah, Zesto's, Zesto's was uh, Zesto's. Oh, Zesto. Yeah. Uh, it, it was originally it was on Broad Street. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? It was over uh, right next to where the Methodist Church is, right over there. And uh, 
across from uh, right where that tire place mm -hmm. is, real near there. And then uh, they moved it. Uh, my my uh, a cousin, uh, Angelo Katsuvis, who, who was in the Crystal Grill with George, mm -hmm. Angelo Katsuvis bought it and moved it to where it was on the corner of, of uh, Jackson and Madison. Uh, Madison. Madison and Jackson. Yeah. And then, uh, and uh, he was from the same village my father was from, uh, and my father brought him from Greece and he lived in our house with us. And, uh, and, uh, our house was kind of like a um, Greek boarding house. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Someone named Mrs. House ran the Zesto in the early 60s. Mrs. Someone named Mrs. House the Zesto in the early 60s. In 1960, Pam says she thinks it was a woman named Mrs. House who ran the Zesto. Yeah, he had a beautiful family. It was George and Priscilla and Harry just recently died. And they're all living in Atlanta. Yeah, well, well, Angelo died back in 1977, I think. Mm. Yeah. Was there, did so? I think somebody mentioned to me earlier that was it the Trailways bus station? Did it also have an eating? Like a yeah, it was a Trailway bus station right across the Rose Theater. Right. Where the Rose Theater. Did, you eat, did people eat there? Like there was a lunch counter? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they had a, at one time, uh, George Letches was, had the uh, concession, the, the food there. Yeah, they, 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 and there was a lot of traffic. Well, that that Rose Theater brings back a lot of memories for me. <laughs> I remember going in for nine cents. Yeah. <laughs> nine cents. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and, and, and you could go in, and it, it, if you wanted to stay over, stay over and watch the movie again if you wanted to. It was, kind of, it was constantly stay going. there all day. Yeah. Uh, Not a bad deal for nine cents. Go to the boat. But, but they didn't someone, <laughs> someone told me at the time that you didn't have to report sales of under 10 cents, which is why they kept it at nine cents for so long. The tax it was a yeah. tax thing. Yeah. The, but the, the, I don't remember getting into the theater, but I can remember 14 cents. Yeah. That and the uh, air conditioning is what I was told. That it was. Yeah, it was it's very, one of the very first places to have air conditioning in town. So. It was a very nice movie, that theater. It was a, a beautiful place. They had a, well, you could get in for 14 cents and for the quarter. You could get a bag of popcorn, a Coke, get in, and a big lollipop, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Take that and have change back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. That's just, you know, that, those days are long gone. <laughs> But I remember uh, you, you had to get, had to get popcorn if you went to the movies. Everybody got popcorn. The movie. So have either one of your businesses you guys considered like, you know, I don't know, have any other options of like expanding where you are physically or moving or anything like that since, you know, it opened? So basically when we came to Thomasville, I, was, I went to college in 81 and my brother and son we married in 82, 83. When I moved back, my school said, you know what? We, we had planned on expanding mom and dad's current location now, doubling the size of it. But the cost would have been the same as building the restaurant. So Massimo opted to go to Valdosta. Oh. And my father helped him open the restaurant. Okay. Is that still? Yes, oh. 32 years. Okay. Wow. Similar to mom and dad? I mean, identical. Identical. Okay. Just some different. Same tier we sue because I like the tier we sue. Yeah, minimum. I have. Oh, yes, I have. Oh, well, I mean, I'm not as regular as Mr. Sampson, apparently. No, I recognize you. Oh. <laughs> I love the dear Um, But yeah, no, I think the, the whole idea of our uh, Do You Remember series is to, well, to figure out people like George, who apparently has a. Well, he's, he's a smart. Yeah. We got to get inside your head. You need to write down, down all these restaurants that you've had. Yeah, and who owned what? Who, who owned, owned what? what? How they were related? I should th yeah. I should think the Greeks are letting the Italians in. Yeah, I'm carrying a lot. I should think them should I'm carrying a lot. We since one of those George, 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 I've got a lot of stuff in the back of my head. Just play poker with George. No, negative. No, no, no. I've got a lot of information. I've got a lot of information in the back of my head. It's okay. hard to get to. Well, sure. <laughs> I don't know. You're right with it got, today pretty good. You're pretty, you're pretty, uh... For 75 years old. See, I can remember three quarters of a century. <laughs> no. 
So maybe <laughs> Travis Bill has always had so many restaurants because it's always because of the tourism. Like you're saying, seventy five percent of your guests are from Tallahassee, Valdosta. So if it's always been a tourism kind of town, maybe that's why it's had so many. You know, I'm thinking back to the town. I well, you got to understand too, though, the Thomasville was where the supposedly where the railroad stops. Right. So right. Was a big sure. yeah. We were the original winter resort of the town. Right. Yeah. Right. Where so all the wealthy, wealthy, wealthy yeah. people had. Uh -huh. they, these hotels had great restaurants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, very bad. And there were very nice hotels, two of them, the two of the three largest hotels in the state of Georgia. Yeah. Yeah, we have some menus from the Piney Woods and the Mitchell House and stuff. That was, I don't think anything we want to eat today, like aspic and, you know, yeah. 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 Uh, so, so the diet has changed a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not quite. And, and uh, they didn't mind waiting at that point. I'm trying to tell them now. Good, good food takes time to cook. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, they don't mind waiting. You know, well, they would have. It would they, be, you know, and it was pretty typical for the time. You would generally wouldn't go into in it was, 1880s. You didn't get a bunch of things to choose from. Yeah, you went in and you got what they were serving for you. Like, but but, but was, there was no fast food. No, no, no. no so we no, invented no. fast food. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> we invented. What was this, this? The this first thing? fast food that came here was Chandler's. Yeah, well, still, uh, still 1964, there. I remember. What somebody mentioned somebody about a, it was like a tea room. Like the, I don't know. I mean, oh, it was a tea, on Gordon Ave. There was a, a tea room. Yeah, oh, like there, went, there was one where Raymond lives now. Still like the, stra Ave. the strawberry or something, strawberry tea, something about it. Oh, the strawberry chow? Oh, the strawberry, the strawberry, yeah, chow. the strawberry. That was in the 80s. Okay. Uh, I was thinking about one in the 40s, right. but Mimosa and Broad come to a point. There used to, there was a place that sold wallpaper, but it had been a restaurant way back. You yeah, the Cottage Grill. Yeah. Oh, Broad. No, no. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, the Cottage Grill. It was right there at Jerger School. Right, right at and, that point. And uh, right at the corner. And, uh, yeah. but, but, but it was like a regular restaurant. Right. The Caddy Corner from Middle Cross and Rod, I was told, was a joke joint. Where? Kind of where... Uh, the parking lot is for the what's called the uh, what's that hospital addition in the one story one that's all the but it was in that area that there was I was told EQ Stacy said there was a joke joint down in there on the other right outside what was the city limits at the time back in the 30s. The oh, I, was, I don't I was even, four about time. I remember that. Yeah, I'm for Not that you want to admit, Mr. Stevenson. <laughs> yeah. Seeing all the places you weren't supposed to go or something, but that would have been bars. I remember riding my bicycle, though, to uh, Barnard Doe Stadium for, mm -hmm. after we finished our baseball games. Yeah. And, and we'd ride by to down Fletcher Street. We'd pass the Dew Drop In and the Red Dot Cafe. That was a. Uh, Kind of scary places. <laughs> we ride out there on our bus. Maybe not some place for a kid to go after a baseball game. No. Yeah. So. Doesn't sound like it. Snooky's pool room. Snooky. Yeah. yeah. That so are we promised like another 50 years of George and Louis and mom and dad's, right? Yeah. I mean, I'll be. Say, I'm 75. <laughs> kids yeah. And I think your kids can have that. I think they're. Uh, <laughs> Then you know, as a young man, he, he's going to last a lot longer. <laughs> well, I have 58 years of memory back here. Where was Andrew? Where was Andrew Salumas from? From Sparta, the same place my mother was from. He was a warrior. Andrew Salumas. Yeah, he had a little place on the corner of Raleigh. Jackson. Yeah, he came here first. He went to uh, went up to Pennsylvania and worked in the coal mines. And, and developed the black lungs. Andrews and Loomis, and they sent him south for his help. So he came to Thomasville, and, and uh, he, he had a big old black pot in his backyard where he boiled his peanuts and parched peanuts really? and peanut brittle. Yes. He pushed it up to the corner right up on Broad Street yeah, to sell peanuts. Yes. And then he, peanut. and after uh, he'd, he'd, go, he'd go to all the ball games to sell peanuts at the ball mm -hmm. games. We got people asking that. about the peanut man. Is that what you're really yeah. talking about? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Andrews and Lumbus. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and he would stop by, and my mother was from Sparta, too. And he was a great friend of our families. He'd come to our house and come to our parties and all. 
and uh, he would give my mother two bags of boiled peanuts every day. He'd go check up on Billy and Jack Loomis. His sons had the pool hall. And uh, they'd stop in and give her the peanuts. And uh, uh, one day he just came by and says, I'm not feeling too well. I think I'm going to go home and just lay down and rest. He went and lay down and, uh, and died. Oh. He's yeah, after, be in his what late 80s, 90s? Probably older than that because he came here with bad health around the turn of the century. Yeah. And he was and he died. Uh, this would have been in the 50s. Yeah. And uh and every day he'd be out in the elements with the black lung. Mm. Get up early in the morning to do his peanuts and then push his cart out there. We've had people ask us if they think the peanut cart might be somewhere in Thomasville, you know, hiding in someone's garage or something. <laughs> if it ever shows up. And, and, was, and, and, the and, and they passed an ordinance where you couldn't do that, but, but he was grandfathered in. Yeah. Because he'd been there so long. Hey, thanks, fellas. I got to go take my kid home. So well, we enjoyed it, man. Get fed. Thank you. Wanna yes. Let the people online know if they've got any other final questions before we wrap up. <laughs> okay, good. The Billiard Academy. Oh. Don't know if that's a question. Is that a question or you wanted to ask if anyone had any recollections of it? No. I don't well, know. She just says the Billiard Academy. You Wait were see if she responds. George, you were saying that the Billiard Academy was a previous, had a previous. Yeah, my godfather sold it to Jack Zalumas. My, my godfather was Chris Blank. Mm -hmm. And he sold it to Jack in 1947. And, and Jack didn't know how to make the hot dogs. So my father had had experience making hot dogs. He could make anything, cook anything. So he comes over and, and he showed, gave Jack the re his recipe. And he showed him how to make the hot dogs. He got him started. Okay. Oh, and, yeah. and they became like best friends. Uh, they were the same age, Jack and my dad. And uh, we would go to the beach together. He'd bring him to our little league baseball games. And, and, and uh, at, at the end of their life, they were in the hospital same floor two rooms apart mm -hmm. and uh two rooms apart mm -hmm. and the stores were two rooms apart the plaza and the billiard academy two <laughs> two, <laughs> two buildings All apart and, 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 yeah. and, and uh, when when jack died uh i go I see my dad and he says where did they take jack i didn't want to tell him so mm -hmm. he says george i know he died but where where is he you, to take, him, take the flowers and go to the funeral. You know? And then my dad died one week later. Oh, goodness. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> really connected yeah. at the hip. Well, we think that, uh, you know, we knew restaurants was going to be a hot topic and eateries, as we call it. Um, like I said, it's always interesting for me. I've only been here six years, so I just drive around and see old restaurants and think what, what you know, they used to be. <laughs> I'm glad that some of them are still here. But. Guys, anything else you want to add to the community online or anything else? I mean, George, I feel like I could just tap into your brain and not that you're not helpful to me, but you are. You have a very good perspective on mom and dad. Well, if you can, if you can ask me, better, better ask me while I can remember. Okay, right now? Or? <laughs> <laughs> but all right, <laughs> the name's come and go. <laughs> yeah, and and at 75, they mostly go. <laughs> You've got a good memory going. Yeah, it's very good. When we were designing this program, Again, I don't know people quite as well, but Ackerman came up with you, and then I just came up with mom and dad. I didn't know you specifically, so I knew that it had some history here. And so it's nice that there are still some, and the plaza obviously is still operating and happily. So still some long standing restaurants in Thomas County. Yeah. Thomas oh, yeah. You know, it would be a good one, my cousin George. Okay. Yeah. Well, George has been around. Let's get him in here for the next one. Yeah. We just get the two of them down, sit down for it. Yeah, or we could do an oral history interview with you and get all the information. We'll unlock your brain and <laughs> download it. We won't take it all. We'll just borrow it and uh -huh. we'll download it, so to speak. Yeah, I can't. I can't spare any. No. <laughs> we won't. We won't take it from you. Yeah, I can't afford to lose it. John and Mr. Sampson, any other final questions for these gentlemen? Or no, I'm anything George, else? That, any other little tiny little restaurant tidbits in the back of your head that you can None think of? None that I can think of. Right Some that you wish were still here. But or? I just, yeah, I just love history. No, you know, that's, that's, what, that's why we're here. We the, love that's the reason I'm here. Yeah. Nick Cavicles. 
Yeah, you know, did he come from well, the same village too? Uh, uh, Nick was from Carpen Springs. See, George came from Greece, but Nick was uh, George's uh, brother-in-law. Evelyn Joannis and, and, and uh, George's wife and uh, Nick Cabocles were uh, uh, brothers and sisters. See? And, and when he came, he was a partner with the Royal Cafe. And then he, he left George and, and, and he became a partner with Charlie Poulos, who also lived in our house. Charlie, Charlie from, from Greece. And house. they were partners and they partner. had a pool room under the upchurch building. That's right. That was on the right side, and the crystal grill was on the left side. Uh, yeah. There was a pool hall. I don't know if you remember that. Well, the, uh, late, the, the, the up church building, the, the business exchange house. building was once called the up church. Right, right. Well, the story I remember about uh, Mr. Kevin Cleese was again, I was little back when we opened Mom and Dad's, you could not sell beer or wine on Sundays, right? As you well know. And, and Nick Kevin Cleese would always show up in this cooler. <laughs> And full of wine, and he would be handing out wine and <laughs> coffee cups. And I told Dad, I said, "Damn, Dad, people really like coffee." In this <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. You you don't drink, do you? You can admit it now if you do. Yeah. <laughs> well, I still like a glass of wine. Okay. But, well, for, but for, he used to pour glasses of wine in for, the coffee cup for a while. But back in those days, Thomasville was called the. Uh, when it's dry county in the state of Georgia. That's right. There was, <laughs> I don't know why they would call it that. But they had the, the liquor store where um, the car wash set now across from the Ford dealership. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was a little liquor store there. And that, he would go over there, pick up the, the wine, and bring it to mom and dad's. When my dad bought, uh, well, when my dad owned these. No, you know, I don't know. We can talk about it. This is, yeah. Uh, sure. When my dad owned that uh, drive in. I'll tell you about it. They went in a poker game. They went in there and there was a there was a room full of little pints of whiskey. That <laughs> was, that was like yeah. a little speakeasy or something. Or? Yeah, it was kind of like it's probably the closest thing to a speakeasy town council I had, I think. <laughs> was they yeah. Oh yeah. Well, it makes sense that these other people came from Tarpon Springs because that the Greeks would do um sponge diving down there. That's how they ended up. That's how a lot of Greeks ended up in Tarpon Springs is they dove for sponges. Yeah. That was a business down there. Yeah. So. Yes, yeah, really a neat town. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I'm glad you guys are still open. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> Mommy, Dad's, and George Lures are not open on Sunday, which is why we're here on a Sunday. Too many tiramisu. Oh, God, <laughs> now you're tempting. Me. Won't you come by and look at I think you're not open on Monday, though, right? But I can I can find somewhere. Oh, no. I think <laughs> I'm going to come by on. Yeah, I think I'm going to come by. Yeah, like, here, Won't you come? All right. I will. You Absolutely. Yes. She'll be making cheesecakes tomorrow. Oh, that's oh, that's bakery. what this one has mentioned, that your cheesecake is. The bakery behind the restaurant. So you guys make everything there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We converted the, com the the garage into a commercial kitchen. But you've not are done you, any commercial. Are you open on Mondays? No, no, sir. We just closed on our... Sunday and Monday. Yeah, we're, they're going to do cheesecakes tomorrow for the whole week. They'll probably do 20. Yeah, you could sell 19 and then only 20, right? <laughs> we, we just bought there last night. That's right. You can That's get a neat picture. It is. It's got a sign. Yeah, that's a beautiful picture. Right Sorry, we should have the slide. Sorry, I, yeah, I usually have it so it's time longer, but I didn't have time last week to be the full usual video. So, that's, so I uh, have it going in the folder slideshow. And it's too fast. That's old Crystal Grill. That's Angelo. Is that George? Or? No, that's Angelo. Is it? Now, this is the priest. Our first priest at our church, uh, that's Father Liberté, oh, and you. George forgot to down the bottom. There's George and Angelo and uh, <laughs> Theo Maris and Father Liberté, Father James. He was our first priest. Is, is George still living? No, he uh, passed away in 2004. Did he? Yeah. I knew Angelo died first. Yeah. Yeah, George lived a lot longer than Angelo. George, Angelo died like 77. He had a heart attack. Yeah. Died real sudden. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the next time we do this, we should do this at one of your restaurants. And then we can all sit there, have a glass of wine, Mom and Dad. have some tears. Yeah. Consider it done. Just kidding, I'm just love it. coming Consider up done. with some crafty ideas. Consider. All right. I'm going to cook us some dinner. Man, this way we can have, you know, 40 plus people online. My, my and cousin used to go to the Henderson's and get yeah. a gizzard box. <laughs> I love those things. He's been a lot Yes, I know. How long have you been in business, Mr. Samson? How long? Have you been in business? 
That's right here. Golly, we uh, opened. Uh, I, I was in business for 43 it. years. Grocery and paint. I was going to say paint. I know what But I'm still in business. I have it, rental property. Not, that's right. I, don't I like take Jack care of them. So. Box. You never retire. He's the hundred right? Those are awesome. Almost um, every, every, every ounce of paint on our walls. Young stripling, Jack Dempsey, Paul oh, oh, Stripling, Ed Jerry. We enjoy your restaurant. Stripling's over there. Oh, so oh, my wife's got what she's got. She doesn't have them identified as well. Yeah. I rent all of them. That's what I thought. It looked like that. I went over there. It's not Jack Dempsey. No, but that one is. Look at that. Jack Dempsey and the stripling, Charles Smith. Where is Jack? Judge Lou. Judge Lucas wanted to go over here. Wow. Which one is Jack Dempsey? So Stribling was from Thomas County. So that's what's yeah, he's the one on the end with the curly hair, I think. That's Jack Dempsey right there in the middle. The yeah, that's Jack Dempsey. Yeah. The, from the Judge third Lewis. from the left? In the yeah. middle. Yeah. The guy that's got to go around with that. The big guy. Let's put it that way. Well, the guy on the end is not very small either. Yeah, man, he's not. I don't think I want to run into Well, tell me again, which one is Jack Dempsey? The one with the crystal on The one with the white shirt on with the guy's arm around. Yeah, that guy. Right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the names that are on this photo, and they may, they're not in order, I don't think. Ben Inman, Young Stribling, Jack Dempsey, Pa Stribling, Ed Jerger, and they repeated Young Stribling, but they may have meant to put in Judge, Judge Lucas instead. Well, Stribling right here, you, you, you can tell he was a fighter. He was a heavyweight fighter, and uh, he, he never won the heavyweight championship, but he, he was in, he was, he was a big. Ed Jerger is the second one from the. In the back there. This one? That's Ed yeah. Jerger. I think I've seen a picture of him before. Mm -hmm. I think everyone was just looking at his picture. But he was inducted into our Sports Hall of Fame. Stri uh, Stripling. I've got a that's picture a somewhere other, that was taken at night. They had set up a ring in the middle of Broad Street. Done that one so what brought you to this? We're in this place. He, I guess it was when he was here. History. I have to find some very Yeah, he was from somewhere in Thomas oh, County, one of those shit. small towns. I've eaten at mom and dad. I've only been here for 40 years. Oh, Russia. Yeah, no, we've been here longer than that. Yeah, we've been here longer than that. That's a great picture of it. Were there before. any others in this show that you guys have wanted to look at? Oh, yeah. Sir, I have it open that I can pull up individual pictures now. The picture of a. Do you ever have a place on place? Do you wish to pull up the restaurant? There's a little. Uh, building on place yeah. three. Straight down there. Going out and of the town. And then the Georgia Cat. No, it's on the third. Oh, the second. Uh, oh. It's on the third. The crystal? Yeah. There. Oh, there you go. I don't know who you're talking about. Oh. Then the crystal. So is that like we're seeing the series now? Yes, before they enlarged. Oh. Is it the same physical building? Yes, they enlarged the building. Yeah. And then yeah, you guys wanted to see the, the crystal, crystal restaurant. Yeah. Okay. We have several of those. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. That's the first one. Good yeah, when the on there. Was on, you know, they so pain. Yeah, they're just pretty little. If it was a homecoming yeah. in Texas, I'd say they're moms, but no, it's a you know, it's just a handkerchief, but yeah, yeah, folded yeah. in such a way that it's standing up. Like these people are really well dressed for working in restaurants. I know. There's a lot of what we see today. What's the other one? Um, the these are all the crystal, yeah. yeah okay. There's a young George. We can get some nice ones if you want. Right yeah, now. Ephraim has all these. So just let us know. Well, I'm going to get it from my sister. Yeah. I know Chandler's so just reopened and they. Now, the year would have been Father uh, Ebert in 19. Uh, That's why your 65. restaurants have done so well. He blessed them all. That's because, right. because, and they're just opening the restaurant across the street. The Catholic priest or priest 1965. Nice street. Probably three. Mm -hmm. That was my assumption. Who is, who is the older well, gentleman? Always, huh? Who is the older gentleman directed I mean, the home George? Oh, okay. So I said, they were Theo and Mary. See, he was a partner in the restaurant. Theo and Mary. Yeah. 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 He was he was a lot older. That's him right there. Yeah. Uh -huh. he, he was a lot older. He, he died. I never knew him. Where farmers? Yeah. That's actually where uh, Crystal Restaurant is. Yeah, it started. Crystal started on the other side of the street, and then they opened. That is 65. But where, where is that? West Jack? 
Is that uh, now it's where right. that uh, Mexican restaurant is now. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, wow. it's, oh okay. it's double the size. It's double, yeah. yeah. yeah it, it was that uh, so, Mexican, uh, what was the name of it? It was Mexican before, and now it's Frida's. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. Down with it. Wrong way. I'll take even some of the old signs. I just love, like, I mean, I love that marquee there. I know it's not going to probably go on Broad Street. Or it's awesome. Yeah. That picture that has that. There were a couple from the first one. Pizza, yeah, those were all the Pizza Hut in the foreground. Uh -huh. The back no, is that window that says Blaine on it. Well, that's why he's here. Oh, dear. All right. Yeah, we're we're starting to have a George's planner shop. George, who's that? Yeah. <laughs> huh? Who's that guy? That's a, that's a young me. That's a young you. Exactly. It looks yeah. exactly like you. Oh, I believe you on that one. <sighs> Now that one, the seventy nine. But you could almost drive by today and kind she of looks the same. still looks very similar. Yeah, excuse me. Seventy six. That's where the show right place used to be. Yeah, you can date that by the gentleman. That's, in the, that's what we call the rose room in the back. Look at Andrew. Holy moly. Andrew, uh, next to George. <laughs> so a lot of those waitresses have been there a long time, uh, like 30 years. It's unbelievable. They were like career races all their lives. Like Georgia Marchant, mm -hmm. Thelma Williams, Francis Daniels. Oh, George, now you're just, he's just uh, showing off now. Goodness gracious. I'm not sure I can look at a picture from that long ago. I can't remember the names. Yeah, you know, he's not you. So, yeah. is that, oh, where's... These guys are butchering some hands. Oh, that's the ball. Right? Dining room. Yeah. Look at the, the hair. hair. Ladies, the hair spray that was going awesome. on in there. I don't know how they went through a whole shift with that hair. Good thing know. there weren't any live planes on the table. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See, I just love those marquees. I know they, um, they're gone, but. This was Zolio's. That was the old sign from the time that we bought the place in 47. The sign was there. And that's where you said the sandwich shop? The sign says the plaza. And then and it would it, flip it, it would have a, a, a neon would change cafe. Yeah. For flash different colors. You don't, have that, you don't have that sitting around in your garage somewhere, do you? No. I don't know what happened. Yeah. That neon sign for the uh, ship Ahoy didn't it have a, it had the, out of the telescope and wouldn't the telescope move up and down. The lights were, the oh, neon lights would change to make it look down. like it was yeah. moving up and down. Oh, 60th anniversary. So, Plaza, at least according to this advertisement, was 1960. Plaza Special, 325. Going on 105, six years. That has to be an old one. Mm. George, you like those prices? Greek salad, 75 cents. Fried chicken dinner, $1.85. No. What year was that? Um, 76. 76. <laughs> I remember when we opened Louis Salad Bowl, we started, uh, you know what we call it, Big Louis Special. We started the Big Louis. And uh, I, I had a sign, uh, a clip from the uh, newspapers, you know, and uh, the Big Louis Special. When we first started, it's a big hamburger, the Greek salad and french fries. It was 89 cents. Oh. And a jumbo burger was 35 cents, half pound burger. Well, we a medium have... quarter pound burger was 25 cents. Everything was back then, for sure. <laughs> I just you don't want to relive those really prices. Were before the fire, we were at more like it was that old restaurant and I did a big Louis special every time. It had the hamburger and it had the Greek salad. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we still got the big Louis. Yeah, we, we still got it. That's probably our best seller. I've had a few in my life. So it's got the <laughs> sign in the back for the Exchange Club. Does that mean the Exchange Club was meeting in that restaurant? Like like the Rotarians meet in the plaza? Or the Kiwanis. Or the Kiwanis. Kiwanis. The, there's a couple of ones with the Exchange Club. So they must have met... Oh yeah. In the plaza. I guess. Yeah, they would be in this room. Was the rose, uh, they were they were meeting there for years in the old restaurant. Okay. Yeah. Because I know they're out at the uh, fairgrounds now. 
I think the exchange. I don't think they meet. Do they meet there? Uh, well, last time I talked to, um, oh gosh, the guy that was helping me on the cars. I can't think of his name. How do you um, like those shoes? You like them? I do. They sure have a lot of cushion. I do. I was going to say, and look at this. Yeah, I'm very comfortable. Yeah. I wear them every day. All right, not very fancy, but they're comfortable. All right, anything else from anybody um, online or any other questions? We want to thank our panelists. I think everybody's probably going to go eat at mom and dad's and George and Louis this week for sure. Not that we don't. Oh, they've been eating already. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 right. You guys are open for any day. Thank you so much for having this. Thank you, guys. This was wonderful. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Oh, sorry.